In just six weeks, voters will be choosing among candidates in more than 500 races across the nation. And today we continue our series diving deep on the 25 contests that could decide who is going to control Congress, as well as the electoral process for the presidency in 2024. And back with me again today, happily, is NBC News senior political editor Mark Murray, the man with all the answers. Our answer man, Mark, only one state is on all three lists here. House, Senate, Governor, and that's, of course, Pennsylvania, um, my favorite state in all of these races. <laughs> so Pennsylvania, The New York Times is reporting today that the Republican Governors Association is not going to come to the rescue of Doug Mastriano, the yeah. very controversial candidate for governor. Yeah, Josh Shapiro, the Democratic nominee, has a tremendous amount of money on advertising and is out, out spending Mastriano, according to our account, $34 million in the general election for Shapiro, just $400,000 for Mastriano. And that disparity, Dasha Burns, Andrea, our colleague who's been reporting a lot on Pennsylvania, has noticed a lot of cross-ticket voters where there are some Republicans who say, hey, you know what, I'm going to vote for Mehmet Oz in the Senate race, but maybe for Shapiro in the governor's race. But it's also important worth knowing that when you're the Republican nominee of a state like Pennsylvania, your floor is still 45 to 46 percent in the vote. And just being the nominee of a major political party in a battleground state, you always have a puncher's chance to win. And we saw that play out, remember, in 2016 with Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. No, indeed we did. And in Pennsylvania, first of all, Mastriano, initially until he was called out by the Philadelphia Inquirer, Rachel Maddow, our show, and others, uh, on the anti-Semitic website that he was hooked into and using that against Josh Shapiro, who is, you know, very identifiably not only Jewish, but an observant Jewish person. And uh, there's a lot of anti-Semitism out there. This is the state of the Tree of Life synagogue attack. And he's tapping into that. And that is not something that you're going to find in the polls. Yeah, Andrea, it's that issue. It's the election denying, as we all know, when it comes to Mastriano. And then abortion is a huge factor. And you and I have talked about this before. But whoever is the next governor of Pennsylvania, whether it's Mastriano or Democrat Josh Shapiro, it's going to have a big say on the legality and the access to abortion that state after Roe v. Wade's overturning. And a new Monmouth poll is indicating that election denying is much more widespread then at this point, even after all the January 6th hearings, they are still denying, is it one out of three? Yeah, it's it's very consistent. Monmouth ends up showing that 29% of all Americans, including 61% of Republicans, don't believe that Joe Biden was legitimately elected in 2020. And it's kind of like what, whether, the, regardless of the polling outfit, how you ask the question, those numbers have been durable, where one in three Americans don't think that Joe Biden won fair and square, and a majority of Republicans share that same belief, Andrea. And you're exactly right. January 6th and the hearings, that you, we ended up hearing videotape of key Do uh, Donald Trump committee and administration officials saying, hey, we knew we were going to lose. We told the former president that. We knew that there really wasn't any widespread voter fraud that would change the results. We've heard all of that kind of testimony. And I do think that the news consumption that a lot of Republicans are getting, they might not be tuning in to what's happening on the January 6th or the media that they actually end up getting th their news from isn't necessarily conveying all of that testimony that we we've all covered over the last several months. Before we leave Pennsylvania, they've had a lot of women registering and abortion with Mastriano saying that he would ban abortion uh, if he is elected governor. Abortion's an issue, and that's another, you know, pushback on Mastriano. Yeah, Andrea, you know, overwhelmingly, uh, midterm elections, the party that controls the White House and Congress usually loses because their voters aren't as energetic as the opposition. But we've seen first from the leak of that Dobbs ruling and then the actual Dobbs ruling themselves that voter, Democratic voters are now almost as fired up as Republicans are, and including among women. And I do think that that is really going to be the demographic that we're going to be following uh, over the next uh, now just six weeks to go. Uh, we haven't talked about the House races, and we need to do that, so you're going to have to come back again. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be here. Uh, but uh, Pennsylvania, the, the 8th Congressional District, is a real bellwether. It is. It's Scranton, Wilkes-Barre, Andrea. This is a district that uh, Donald Trump narrowly won in 2020. It's a rematch where Democrat uh, Matt Cartwright ended up beating Jim Boatnett in 2020 just by 52 to 48. There's a rematch again between these two candidates, and it's become a proxy fight between Donald Trump and Joe Biden. Joe Biden has been with Cartwright recently. Donald Trump the same for Jim Boatnett, and uh, really in an area in which, you know, that, that part of the Pennsylvania 
Pennsylvania tea, the Northeast Pennsylvania. Republicans have been doing a little bit better and better at each election cycle. It used to be Joe Biden country and certainly Bill Casey country, we'll father see. and son. We'll see what happens in November. Pennsylvania. Mark Murray, thank you so much. Thanks.